Will brain-to-computer interfaces be tiny or huge by 2030? At the end of this video, I predict how huge they will be on a scale of 1 to 10. Elon Musk, the founder of Neuralink, is on a mission to bring the benefits of brain-to-computer interfaces to the masses, including to people like Raksha Lu, who lost the ability to move her legs after a horse riding accident. See if you agree with my assessment of the technology needed, the companies, how much there is to love and jobs. What we need to know on technology is whether it will be solved or unsolved. Capturing brainwaves by 2030 is solved. Raksha's brain cannot communicate with her feet because of the damage to her spinal cord and so is unable to walk. Elon created a microchip that is capable of understanding what Raksha's brain is saying. Every time neurons in Raksha's brain communicate with each other, they release electric impulses. Elon's microchip is made of thousands of microelectrodes that are able to listen to these tiny electric impulses. His system includes around 3,000 electrodes per array that are distributed across 95 threads. The microchip is then capable of storing these signals for later processing. These measuring devices can be placed on several parts of Raksha's body. Non-invasive methods place the device on Raksha's skull. Alternatively, there are invasive procedures that place them inside her skull or directly inside the brain. Currently, Elon only has the approval to experiment with brain-to-computer interfaces on animals. The second technology that needs to be cracked by 2030 is processing brain waves. This may be solved. Elon has created a translation algorithm that converts brain waves into binary code. Binary codes are the language of machines. His algorithm needs to distinguish between different brain signals so it clearly understands users' intent. For example, in the movement-related areas of the brain, neurons represent intended movements. Electrodes are placed near these neurons. They decode the information represented by those cells. There are neurons in the brain that carry information about everything we see, feel, touch or think. The third technology needed by 2030 to give us the skill to take action with our brain is maybe solved. The interface sends commands to output devices, ordering the actions that the user wants. This eventually will allow someone to command their car using their brain, move their gaming avatar with their thoughts, or move a robotic arm or leg prosthetics. Overall, what do I predict about the technology by 2030? I predict that there'll still be a lot that needs to be solved safely, and will be at the mid to lower end of the scale. To help yourself think more about your life in 2030, hit the subscribe button now to get regular predictions. It'll help you be one step ahead. If all this magic happens, it's because companies are in the ring taking the daily knocks that come with getting anything new off the ground. If it's going to be huge, we're going to find there's already unicorns, startup companies worth more than a billion dollars, and really active big corporates doing a lot, represented by this lumbering elephant. The company Neuralink is well on its way to becoming a unicorn, with a valuation of half a billion. Elon Musk, its CEO, has added so much impetus to this area with his microelectrode implants. He aims eventually to implant a computer chip roughly the size of a large coin into the human brain via a robot surgeon. The chip, which Neuralink calls the Link, will wirelessly connect the brain to the digital world, starting by connecting to a smartphone. The resulting computer power, according to Musk, will allow humans to be broadly competitive with rapidly developing AI. I created Neuralink specifically to address the AI symbiosis problem, which I think is an existential threat, Musk said. In the nearer term, Musk expects Neuralink to help with depression, memory loss, dementia and paralysis. Neurable is another company fighting in the ring to make it all happen. Ramsey Zalcade, founder of Neurable, got into brain-computer interfaces as a kid after his uncle lost his legs in a trucking accident. Alcade sees neurotechnology built into a pair of headphones as the first step towards a brain-computer interface for consumers, based on non-invasive EEG technology. Think about stopping, starting or skipping songs with your mind without ever touching your phone.
Neurobull created the first mind-controlled virtual reality games. Their new headphones will monitor users' brain activity, showing how and when their brain works best, minimizing distractions and maximizing the focus. Kernel is focused on brain-computer interfaces to help with mental conditions and memory problems. It's researching neurological diseases and dysfunctions such as Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. Its sound ID software can tell what song a person is listening to just from brain data, a sort of Shazam for the mind. In a demonstration, DJ Steve Aoki tried one of Colonel's helmets and he said, yo, this thing is unbelievable. I've never seen anything like this before. Colonel's brain interface could decode what I was listening to in real time, killer job. There's a number of corporates that are active, including Facebook and DARPA. Facebook acquired New York-based control labs for over a billion dollars. Its special bracelet allows users to control virtual avatars with brain activity alone. DARPA is investing heavily in the neurotech industry. DARPA is the US Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency. It has a brain initiative spanning 11 major projects, with $3.2 billion in funding secured through to 2026. So looking at these companies, what does it tell us? There are plenty of startups, though no unicorns, and there are not that many active multinational companies. It all points to it being at the lower end of the scale by 2030. If you want to dig deeper on these predictions and get yourself more prepared for 2030, come to my meetup. It's every Tuesday, it's via Zoom, Use the link in the description to sign up. You'll love it and it's free. Now, what's all this love stuff? It's the bit where I ask whether you and I have reasons to give plenty of five star ratings and not one star. We'll all be giving five stars for helping with disability. It improves the quality of life of disabled patients. It can make previously passive devices into smart and active ones. An example is prosthetics. A user can hold a glass of water and drink using it just like using natural hands. Four stars for controlling things by thought alone. Imagine being in bed and telling your phone to read the most urgent emails and then call your best friend, all without touching your device. And play games just using mind control and optimize your work performance using brain computer interface insights. Two stars for accuracy of results. The brain is a highly complex organ. Sometimes we ourselves are unable to understand what goes on in our minds, so it is unrealistic to expect man-made interfaces to correctly interpret all our brain signals. It will sometimes misinterpret the user's intentions. For instance, a disabled person with a prosthetic who actually wants to grip something but it doesn't do it properly could easily happen. One star for invasive surgery. Elon's plans involve the installation of microelectrode implants directly into our brains. Such procedures as any surgery are inherently risky. Death or permanent disability are possible. Looking at all the things there are to love and not love about the brain to computer interface, they point to it being at the middle of the scale. If you're enjoying this, don't miss out on the next prediction. Hit that subscribe button now. Next, jobs. If it's gonna be huge, then there's gonna be lots of jobs hired and fired. It may sound harsh, but if this works really well, disabled carers will be fired because people will be able to help themselves more. On the hired side, Elon's Neuralink has 41 job vacancies listed on LinkedIn at the time of recording. Do any of these roles interest you? Neuroscientists, mechanical engineers, electrical engineers, software engineers, robotics engineers and pathologists? It's well worth looking at LinkedIn if you're interested in getting a job in the brain-computer interface sector. Helping you make good career decisions is a big reason why I'm doing this Life in 2030 channel. Jobs in fast-growing new sectors like this are exciting and often more secure than in older sectors. I was fortunate to join the e-commerce sector with eBay in its early days and have benefited ever since. You could set up some job alerts for these companies, it's easy to do on LinkedIn. And My Life in 2030 is a course that I run that is perfect for you if you want to think through the years ahead more. To book a place, see the description below. It's truly life-changing and helps you make the next career move a smart one. Because there's some jobs being hired, it points to it being in the middle of the scale. Now we've covered all four sections, it's time for me to make a prediction. We've seen the technology needed is maybe solved, there are impressive startups, it gets an overall three star rating and some new jobs being hired. This means that on a scale of one to ten, brain to computer interfaces are around the middle of the scale by 2030 at a three. 
To get updates on this prediction, sign up for my weekly predictions newsletter, click the subscribe button to get our next prediction in a couple of days time, and go and have a look now at this fascinating prediction. I'll see you there.